So now we have a test database. In that test database, let's create a table. Go to right click, new table, and just punch in X. It really doesn't matter. Go OK, and it'll ask you to save it. Just say OK. So all we're really concerned about at this point is that we have data, and there's our data. So we have a data called table one in this database. Now we want to we want to log ship this data for HS Solutions. And what that means is we want to make a copy of this database on server one, which is in Los Angeles, and we want to make a copy and send it over to server two, which is in New York. And as you can see, if I click here and uh, refresh, I don't have a database called test. So what I want to do is copy this database from New York and dump it here. And that's the whole idea of log shipping. And that's what we're going to do. So how do you do that? Go to server one, right click. The other thing I want you to point out before I do that, actually, if I open SQL server agent jobs, and if I go to server two, SQL agent jobs, you'll see that there are no jobs created here. And what's going to happen when I do when I do log shipping on server one, a job will be created here, and that job will be backup job. In the SQL server or server two, I will have two jobs created. One will be called the copy job and one will be called the restore job. And obviously the primary purpose of this is to back up the transaction logs and dump them here. That's what you're going to visually see. So when we start the process, the first thing we're going to do is back up this database and the transaction logs and dump them this to the shared drive that server two can access. And then what's going to happen after that is on a timed basis is these two jobs here that will be created. One will copy that from that other folder and dump it here. And then from here, it'll restore it. So let's look at that now. So how do you create log shipment? Right click the database in question, in this case, test. Right click, tasks, and go ship transaction logs. And this will pop up. So we want to enable the primary database for log shipping. So just check it. Now here you'll notice obviously it's the backup schedule. By default, what happens is a transaction log backup will occur every 15 minutes uh, for the whole day. Now obviously you can change that, but for our purposes, we're fine. Now this will depend upon your environment, whether you want to do it less or more. And there's obviously consequences for less because you'll have more uh, small backups, but obviously then you'll have to restore it and it can get latency also if you do larger ones. So take that in consideration. But for our purposes, 15 minutes is default and we're going to check that. So now we're going to make this into a uh, uh, enable it and we're going to go backup settings. This window will pop up. This window says transaction log backup settings. As I said, the schedule is for every 15 minutes. If you want to change it, you can. Now, for demonstrations purposes, I can do every two, but I'm not going to because I want to show it manually. But here you can change. This is just like a regular backups schedule that you can do. You can change whatever you wish, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly. But the default 15 minutes is fine, so it's going to happen every 15 minutes. The transaction log backups of the test database are going to occur every 15 minutes and dump it to this folder. And I'm comfortable with that, and obviously the name and so on. So we'll just go OK. Now here, obviously, it's asking for the network path for the folder you want the transaction logs to be backed up, and that is this one. So let's go back here, right-click, Properties, Sharing, and just copy this. So that's what a share means, the sl slash slash. And go here and go Paste. And then and that's it. And then obviously it's talking about a few other features of this. It, it's going to delete files older than 72 hours. Now, obviously, we want to keep this because we don't want the disk to uh, take over if there's not being deletions of older files. So they leave that default, but if you want to change it, that's fine. This one is alert. If no backup occurs within one hour, then you get an alert that you've set up through the uh, uh, SQL database mail system. So that will just leave it as default as an hour. This is called the LS backup job. You can change it, but I'll use it. Uh, I'll just leave it as is. Obviously, you have the option to compress the backups, but remember uh, the cost is greater CPUs uh, time, so we're going to just leave it at this.
So at this, at this point, all we're saying is take transaction log backup settings of this database, dump it to this uh, path, do it every 50 minutes, and I'm going to go OK. As soon as you've done that, this pop-up happens. Now, the next step is to add the second Edari instance. Well, let me close this and go Add. Now, obviously, we're going to add, connect to the secondary database, which is server 2. Click Connect and obviously change this to 2. I'm using uh, the Windows domain account, which has a domain account. I'm going to go OK. So now we have three tabs here. Initialize secondary database, copy files, restore transaction. This is obviously a little more complicated than initial, but it's relatively easy. So let's go over them one by one. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, is it says you must restore a full backup of the primary database into the second database before log shipping can happen. Obviously, as we know, when we've done um, backup and restores, you need to have an existing database for the log shipping to occur on. So this, you can do it automatically. Now, these are the three options. Do you want the management studio to restore the backup into the secondary database? And these are the options. Yes, I did not generate a uh, full backup and restore it to the secondary database manually. This can do it automatically, so I prefer this method. So I'm going to say yes, generate a full backup of the primary database and restore it to the second data, uh, secondary database automatically. So this will do it for me. Um, had I had I created a backup, then I would have this would have been highlighted and I would have been OK. But since I did not, and I want you to show you to do it this way, it's a lot easier. So we're comfortable with that. So this will back up the database test on the secondary server and then restore it. Then we go on this copy files. This is asking for the destination for the copied uh, files. This is usually the location of the second server. So we need to go to second server here and copy this. So again, let's go here, right click, Properties, sharing, let's copy this path. Let's see if that works here. And type it here, and we're good. And again, you can schedule it. Um, you can change the schedule also. Since it's 50 minutes going to be back up, I'm going to leave this as default to say hey, every 50 minutes, uh, back copy this data and then restore the database. So we're going to leave that as is, and again, the delete copies after soon. So this is all default and that's fine. Then the third tab obviously is, is going to restore that transactional log. Now here are the options that we were talking about, the state where you have the no recovery state or the standby mode. If you choose a no recovery mode, then the database on the secondary server will not be accessible and will, you will not be able to do any select statements. We want to see that, so we're going to do standby mode. Now, obviously, uh, you can get disconnect users in the database when it's storing database. Understand that when you're backing up and restoring a database on a constant 15-minute increment, because that's what we've set, hey, restore this paper database every 15 minutes with the transaction logs that are coming to this folder. Obviously, every time you have a backup restore, uh, you will have users disconnected. So, you know, be aware of that. So disconnect users, if we can do that if we want, and that's fine. As soon as I go OK, well, actually, let me uncheck that. We'll go OK. Then we're set. If I Now we're set. We've, we've set uh, log shipping. And in a nutshell, what we've said is take this primary server, primary database called test, take a full database backup of this, dump it into this uh, shared folder, then go to the second server, copy that from this, dump it here, and then restore it here in a read-only mode. So let's see if that works and go OK. And obviously, there's four processes, as you can see here. So we've got the primary backup. And let's open that, actually. So there's the backup automatic, automatically done, and then restoring and saving files. And let's just close. So now that the database is in log mode, let's look at server two, what's going on here. Actually, before I do that, let me go to SQL Server Agent, click it, and there is the primary job that I told you about. 
So the primary server has one job and that is backing up and this will occur every 15 minutes and I'll dump it, all the transaction log in this shared directory. Now let's go to server two. And if I go to databases and refresh, you'll see that that database called test is in standby read only mode. I can actually expand it and you can read all this uh, table. So I can even do a select statement against this. Now, if I go to the jobs and if I refresh that, we should have two jobs and we do. We're going to copy job and restore job as we've been talking about. Now, obviously, we don't see anything here because these have not been executed because they have not been executed because they're waiting for the 15 minute time job. So I'm going to manually do this now. So I'm going to go to server one. And the first thing I want to do actually is I'm going to just create some data, if you will. So I'm going to create another table called table two. So I'm going to go right click new table X. Let's close it and go. Okay, um, oops, what happened? New table X. Save it. Go yes. And then we can close it. So if we refresh this, we've got more data added here. So obviously at this point, it has not taken a transactional log back up because it's waiting for 15 minutes to occur. So what I'm going to do is actually manually do this. Now watch here as I execute this manually. It'll just take a second. Now, the other thing to note is that as we progress, as we progress, this is going to be a relatively quick one because there's virtually no data. In a live production database, you have to be conscious of how long the backup job takes. This could take a very, very long time. It could take minutes and it can take hours depending on your database. So let me repeat that. Don't be, don't be um, disillusioned by the uh, fact that this is being done very quickly. It is not. It is only being quick because there's no data in this database. If I chose a database that had 100 million rows or 200 million rows, it's going to take a lot longer than this few seconds that it uh, to back up. So take a note of that. So now that this backup of this transaction log is backed up here, uh, we're going to go to server two. And now nothing's happening here because again, the server jobs have not been executed. So the first job that's going to execute is the I'll copy. So I'm going to manually do this. So now this is going to go to the other shared drive and it's going to copy it and dump it here. And again, this will take the same kind of process as it takes on a backing up data. It's not going to be this quick, but for demonstration purposes, that's fine. And there it is, as you can see. So now I'm going to close it. So now if I go here or let's go to tables and refresh it, I don't see the table two. And that's because obviously I have not restored it. So again, this is going to have to be executed also. And again, the restore process is going to take a long time depending on the database size. And there we go. So now if I go to test database and refresh the tables, you'll see two tables and we have log shipping. Now, if I leave this going on every 15 minutes, so let me go to back for, so every 15 minutes, uh, a backup will occur and then every 15 minutes a copy will occur and every 15 a restore occur of that transaction log and this will continue until everything is fine so let's create another table just for demonstration purposes go x save it ah, keep going wrong button go x and save it yes so now we have additional data and again, if we right click, start again, watch this transactional log fill here. So now this is what's going to be happening on a continuous basis every 50 minutes or whatever time you allot when you change the uh, timing. So again, there it is. And if you go to server two, you don't see it. This is going to run first. See that transactional log being copied. And then obviously restore. So now you understand what log shipping is and how to execute it. And now if I obviously go here and refresh, I get the third data set here. So what I'm going to do right now is actually now uh, make sure you actually disable this. Uh, uh, you don't have to delete it. You can just disable it because if you don't, then your drive will consume a lot of space. And obviously at this point, there's no space because uh, it's very little, but if you're doing it on a uh, kind of a test environment where you may have it, then obviously that can 
become uh, problematic, that it'll consume all the space. So this is a, was an introduction to log shipping and HS solution, one of those HS solutions and how to test it and execute it. Now, the next couple of um, videos, uh, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, fail over this. Let's kill that. Fail over this. So now you now you understand that the um, now you understand what log shipping is and how it's executing. Well, what's the remember? What's the point of HS solutions? The HS, HS solutions is if this server server A, the primary database, if it needs to be disabled for some reason or if it's corrupt, uh, I want to be able to access all that data uh, from here now. And this is in read-only uh, mode, uh, read-only mode, standby mode. And what I want to do now is change the status of this to become uh, recovered. So it becomes a primary server, if you will, while I'm working on this database or this server and doing whatever I have to. So this server goes down. I need to do some problems uh, on it or test on it. And I'm going to fail this over. So this becomes inaccessible, if you will, and this will become a primary database. Then once I've done whatever I have to do on the primary server, I revert back or what's called failover back this standby mode um, uh, or this product primary mode will become secondary mode again. And I'll be showing you that in the next coming video. So I think I'm going to leave it there because this is going to be taking a lot longer than I anticipated, but uh, we'll divide it into a couple of videos so you have a understanding of this. So I hope you understand what now log shipping is and how you can execute it in a production basis. But the primary purpose of log shipping is to have high availability solutions, which means you have redundant data and redundant databases on another environment, uh, such as this, for example. So you've, we've copied this basically and dumped it here, and we've got it in different locations. And then once we have fixed this, uh, we can revert this back to here. And that's what we're going to show you on the next video. So I think I'll leave it here because I've talked too much. So my name is Raphael, and this is how to become a production SQL database administrator. See you in the next video.